Howdy howdy. If you are anything like me, you like to 3D print a lot, and when you 3D print a lot, inevitably you wind up with a lot of plastic. Failed prints, rafts, what have you, all this stuff usually winds up in the trash, but I hate doing that. I hate wasting perfectly good plastic. So today I'm gonna show you how I turn all of my plastics that would otherwise be discarded into something like this, and then how I turn something like this into something that's actually useful. Here we go. Oh boy. All right, get yourself a baking sheet of some kind. I'm using this pizza pan because it's round and the only thing that tastes better than pineapple on pizza is PLA. Then get some parchment paper. Why? Because nothing sticks to it. It's like poor person silicone. It's fantastic. I'm gonna rip off a sheet about, well, that worked out perfectly. I ran out, but that's okay because it's the perfect size. You just want to cover the baking sheet and now you're going to put your filament on there. If you want to be a purist about this, you can of course use the exact same type of filament, you know, whatever you have, PLA, PETG, whatever. But you guys of course know I am nothing close to a purist. So I have kind of everything mixed together here. It's worked okay for me in the past. Just be aware that different plastics will melt because we are melting this at different temperatures. So that could affect your final product. And of course, colors may matter to you. So keep that in mind. And I love this part because you get to look at all the little things that didn't quite make it. You want to do your best with this and get just as even a layer of plastic as possible. It's not an exact science. You don't want to overdo it. You don't want things to go everywhere. Just do your best. Got to imagine when it compresses down after we melt it, it might even help you to cut things up. All right, now let's go pop this thing in the oven. But real quick, if you guys could do me a huge favor and just hit that thumbs up button, it'll help get this video out to more people and it'll let me know how I'm doing. Thanks a bunch. All right, just gonna set it down in the middle and you want to set your oven to around 500 degrees Fahrenheit or around 250 degrees Celsius, slightly above the melting point of whatever the hottest melting pointed plastic you have is. I typically just like to keep an eye on it. I haven't had anything burn by doing this, but I wouldn't feel comfortable telling you not to look at it. I'll let you know how long this takes for me. And it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. All these plastics are meant to be melted in the presence of human beings, but be extra careful crack some windows, turn on some fans, and wear some breathing protection while you're doing this. Be as safe as possible because this ain't normal. Cool? All right. All right, it has been about 10 minutes. You can see it's all melting down real good. I do have a little bit of leakage, which I guess I'll clean up later. And that's why it's important to wear gloves. What I like to do is kind of recenter it by folding over the parchment paper. Careful not to get plastic caught in like the folds of the parchment paper, like right there. If I were to fold this over, it would get caught up in there and it would be a pain to get out of there. So just kind of use your judgment and then turn off your oven and let it cool down. And after it's cooled down to below the melting point of your lowest melting temperature plastic, your parchment paper will just peel right off. We didn't press this down all the way so it's not caught in there so we can get it out. And I'm not trying to brag or nothing, but I do have another roll, so we're good to go. This is probably my favorite part, just seeing all the cool designs you get when you do this. So here we are after that first melt. Something else I like to do is it actually gets pretty thin towards the edges, so to clean up, got my handy dandy linoleum shears. And this stuff is tough, but these scissors are tougher. Link in the description. And now it is time to take a look at your pile of melted plastic. And you'll see there are some spots that are thinner, some spots that are thicker. So what do we do? We go back to our pile of other plastic and kind of patch up the gaps and do another melt. So that way it's as even as we can possibly get it. And also at this point, these little stringy bits are your enemy. You really want to use those first and get them out of the way. When you're trying to make a nice edge, they will be difficult. I'm happy with that. Back into the oven it goes. If your parchment paper is sticking to your plastic, all that means is that you didn't let it cool down enough before you started to peel it away. Just let it cool down a little bit more and the rest will come right off. And then you just wash, rinse, and repeat until 
your puddle of molten plastic is the shape and thickness that you want. Order up. Crispy. So if you have a result like this, especially after doing a longer melt, your parchment paper is gonna be more brittle. So you wanna let it cool completely all the way down. Just be patient, which is difficult for me to do, but I'm doing it. All right, these edges are being kind of a pain. Hang on real quick. All right, I guess I left it in the oven a little too long. I had to get out the trusty peasant knife and like some sandpaper, but we got it done. If you get yourself to this point, the opportunities are endless. It's just a piece of material to work with. So let's work with this. But what am I gonna do with this thing? I am going to make this into a bowl, but how you ask? Well, you might be aware of this technique where if you have some old vinyl records, you can drape them over a bowl and pop them in the oven and you'll get yourself a vinyl record bowl. Y you can tell I made this a, a very long time ago. Anyway, I'm gonna do the same thing with this, but I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I have tried in the past to pop these into an oven and put them over a bowl. It doesn't really melt super evenly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this thing. This is just a metal bowl type of thing that's actually a colander. So I've gone ahead and just used foil tape around the edges just to seal it up. If you're trying this at home, get one without holes in it. This is just all I had and I like the shape, so I'm gonna use it. I have some vegetable oil here and I'm just gonna put a light coat just to make sure it doesn't stick, you know? Unfortunately, my microphone decided not to work while I was recording this next segment, but suffice it to say, I put the disc of plastic back into my oven and let it soften up, and then I carefully ran that disc of 500 degree plastic across my house and into my studio, where I flopped it down over top of that metal bowl, and then used my oven mitted hands to mash it down over the form until it solidified into that shape. This particular technique, if you hadn't guessed, is a little bit new for me, and it didn't really go according to plan. I wasn't able to avoid getting parchment creases inside of the plastic as I was mashing it down, but my main focus was just getting the shape of the bowl. If I could give any advice to anyone out there trying this, it would be to not handle molten plastic while you're making a YouTube video. It's very inconvenient. Also, if you're gonna do that, maybe turn on your microphone. Anyway, after a few minutes of manual manipulation, the plastic was holding its new shape, so I stepped away and let it cool down completely. All right, we are totally cooled off, so let's go ahead and peel this thing up and see what we got. All right, got a couple spots where the paper did get caught. Well, that came out actually. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh man, I think we might've got lucky here. Is that all of it? It's a miracle. None of that parchment got caught in the thing. So, oh, I'm really happy that it worked out like that. Let's get a good old fashioned uh, persuasive device. I love it when stuff works. Oof. So it's tight because the plastic contracted around the mold there. So with a little convincing. There we go. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh, that turned out so cool. Ah, oh, it's rad. It's looking so cool. Oh man. All right, and as far as finishing this thing up, there's one more thing I want to do to it. So let's go do that now. Got the good old fashioned heat gun here. So I'm gonna do, kind of do a once over around the whole outside. There are some spots that are kind of thin right there. Just a little thin spot that I think could look a little better. Also by hitting it with the heat gun and just kind of slightly remelting everything. We'll get a cool high gloss shine. All right, let's finish this thing up. All right, this is looking really cool. I'm especially digging these kind of holes that were present in the actual prints and I guess like the infill and stuff. And they're creating like these really cool looking pockets that combined with the folds that were created. It, I mean, it looks like it's crinkled up fabric or paper or whatever, but it's plastic. It's just super cool. I'm really interested to see what other effects I can achieve 
with this sort of technique. And if you have any ideas, leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. All right, a bowl, a useful object made out of something that would have otherwise just been discarded. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of inspiration. The next time you're thinking about getting rid of your failed prints or filaments, you'll instead go, hey, how about instead I almost give myself second degree burns. Or better yet, maybe you can make something out of it. If you wanna see what I get up to next, there's gonna be a subscribe button down there somewhere. And if you wanna see something right now, there's gonna be some videos popping up on the sides. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.